Hi, welcome to our latest Duck Soup webinar and thank you for joining us. At Ducks, we are lucky enough to get to speak to so many users through our support and booster calls during our webinars, via our user forums, and this is where we learn about the different ways our customers use DuckSoup and how it benefits their business. Today, we are fortunate enough to be joined by one such user to share his experience and top tips for using LinkedIn automation. Michael Simpson is a tennis player, a sailor, which you can probably see from his background, and owner of two very successful businesses. What interested us about Michael's outreach was the longevity of it. In this session, Michael shares his approach to using duck soup to play what he calls the long game. Rather than focusing on a quick transactional win, his approach is to nurture relationships so that Michael's businesses are front of mind when a lead is ready to convert. So for those that don't know who I am, I'm Jo, I'm a member of the marketing team at Duck Soup, and I'll be the one collating all of your questions as we go through the session. So please add your questions into the question box on your screen and make sure you stick around to the end to find out the answers. So uh, quick one, we will be sending the recording out to all of you. Um, it will normally come out in about five hours time. Um, and if anyone would like the, uh, the slides themselves, then just send uh, an email to info at ducksoup.com. And now all that's left for me to do is exit the stage and hand over to Michael. Thank you, Michael. Hey, thanks, Joe. Um, well, hello, everybody. And uh, I probably should start saying I hate selling. Um, I, maybe some of you listening today will have the same feeling. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are either running your own businesses or working in small businesses, and obviously selling is a huge part of what we do, but I don't particularly like it. Um, however, um, and this is another image I kind of found of how I felt about selling with the sharks surrounding me. But if you notice in this little image, there's a little duck floating on the water. Well, that's kind of sort of how I felt when I started using duck soup. Sorry, I even get to get a baseball cap. By the way, I'm under no commission at all on this, but I did get a baseball cap. So Duck Soup came along. And um, so really this, this chat today is to give you some, some of the top tips, some of the secrets that we use um, when using Duck Soup. And, and as Joe says, to uh, establish relationships with, with customers and nurture relationships with potential customers. So. Uh, Anyway, here are the 12 secrets. Well, they're coming up. Um, I probably should say here at this stage, I don't know how you're feeling, and this is obviously very impersonal. There's, what a, there's a 130, 140 of you listening at the moment. Some of you may be feeling like the girl on the right, thinking, wow, this is going to be great. We're going to have lots of secrets. Some of you may not be as enthusiastic. Well, hopefully the fact that you've turned up today, there is, there is a sense of enthusiasm. But there is a health warning here. And my health warning is don't get too excited. Um, there are some things you will already know, but hopefully I'm going to share some secrets that, you know, just might be new for you and might be useful in the work that you're all doing and, and how you are using duck soup or how you might plan to use it in the future. So, and actually for your own health, try not to be like the guy on the left anyway, be more like the guy on the right. Um, before I start with my secrets, briefly, I, I, Joe kind of touched on what I do. Well, I'd like to be playing tennis and I like to be sailing but uh, I have a day job. And uh, for 23 years, I've been running a, uh, a consultancy, uh, an innovations agency. And what we do um, with Ideas First is we help large consumer-focused organizations to, to generate, uh, to refine, and ultimately to test ideas for new products and new services. So we are currently running projects with Johnson & Johnson. We run projects with Unilever, with Pepsi, et cetera. So large consumer-focused organizations. And I started off my life um, in marketing with, with Procter & Gamble. Um, the team I work with, uh, we have a virtual team of creative agents, researchers, facilitators. And I also work with some global market research agencies to help us with, with testing of ideas in different countries. We have eight core products. This is probably not relevant, but I just, you know, when we start talking about how we sell, hopefully there will be a, a link. But we have eight products. We help our clients with, with insights, finding insights, finding trends. We run different types of workshops. 
we work with creative agents, we have copywriters on our team, and we also help with testing of ideas. And finally, uh, before I go into my secrets, uh, we also uh, develop and sell software, and one of our tools is something called ZipZap Ideas. Um, actually, I say that because I think I watched The Apprentice recently. I don't know, the, I don't know what the, the geography of the audience today, but it's a UK program, and there was an idea for ZipZap, and actually Alan Sugar hated the name, so I was very upset about that. But anyway, we have a software tool called ZipZap Ideas for collaboration of sharing and evaluating ideas. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the secrets. And I've got 12 secrets for you. Um, I'm not sure we're going to need the full hour, um, but uh, I will finish and hopefully there'll be some questions. And I think uh, as uh, Joe and Giles said, you know, just post your questions on the, on the forum. So 12 secrets as to how we use duck soup uh, to nurture uh, and, and build relationships with potential clients. So secret number one, and actually I'm taking a step back, um, and uh, this secret is called be ready to refine your offer. Although I probably should say, have you got the right offer? So before you start doing lots of work selling and delivering, um, you know, what is your offer? And I, I guess this little model that I use really kind of drives what I do with my business and with the team I work with, you know, I'm really doing three things. I'm building an offer, I'm selling an offer, I'm delivering offer, an offer. And, um, and I guess hopefully there's some thinking involved. So from a building the offer, you know, what new products can we offer our clients? Uh, and so then we kind of pull together, whether it's software or building relevant team in terms of building that offer. Obviously what we're here today is how we sell our offer and and you know i guess why i'm here is we've constantly been looking for smarter ways of targeting presenting and selling our offer to to clients and by the way i'm not saying we've got it 100 right at all but, and we're just constantly learning and and trying different things and and duck soup has clearly been a really useful tool uh, so uh, how do we sell our offer? Well, we sell it in all the usual ways. You know, we've tried Google advertising. Hopefully our website has got reasonable SEO. Emailing and HubSpot, we use a platform HubSpot, which I think some of you may be familiar with. There are, of course, others. But LinkedIn and Duck Soup in the middle in red really, I feel, has been one of the best ways of engaging our clients or potential clients on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, as opposed to when we're engaged on a project, well, fine, we're doing that by phone, by email, by Zoom. But outside of a project, you know, LinkedIn and DuckSoup have been really great at helping us to engage. Um, but probably the most important thing we should be doing is delivering an offer. And, and, you know, that is all about how can we deliver our offer in a way that clients want to come back for more. Because I'm under no illusion, the most effective way of selling, certainly for our business, and I suspect for most businesses, whether you're running a hair salon or an accountancy firm, is if you can deliver a great offer, people will come back for more. And, uh, you know, that's the, the, the dream model. So whilst Duck Soup and LinkedIn are important, the most important way that we grow our business is making sure people come back and use us again. So anyway, but secret number one for all of us or for all of you is have you got the right offer uh, by which you're going to go and start selling? But let's focus on selling. Let's focus on how we use that little duck, duck soup, uh, in order to build those relationships. So secret number two uh, coming up. Uh, no drum rolls here, no surprises, but it's create your own funnel. And again, Forgive me if I'm preaching to the converted, but if, you know, selling, certainly for us, it's a numbers game. And so we've obviously got to get a funnel working in terms of defining target clients. And then we run new connection campaigns. Once hopefully people connect with us, we then can start running with LinkedIn first degree campaigns. But ultimately what we're trying to do is engage those people convert them into email, convert them to HubSpot, and ultimately meet them, normally via Zoom, and then send them a proposal, and hopefully we run a project. But the numbers go down, and it is a numbers game. But 
whatever you're doing, you've got to create your own duck soup engagement funnel. That's secret number two, maybe no surprises. Okay, secret number three, um, I think the last time I wore a suit to work was about 23 years ago. But uh, anyway, the point is, get ready for your connections. You know, you're about to start a campaign. Are you ready? Is your house in order? Now, most of us, we're using LinkedIn. That's your first point of call where someone's going to come and look. Um, I'm not professing to say my LinkedIn page is the best. And uh, there have been some great courses that Ducks, the, um, the Duck Soup team have run. And there, I think there a couple of people I've listened to about how to present yourself more effectively. But so if there's anybody out there listening who's got a better way of doing it, I'm all ears. Um, but anyway, the important point is, you know, is your LinkedIn profile, you know, Firstly, actually, do you know your audience and have you refined your profile? Have you provided articles, expertise, which is relevant to the audience that you're hoping to connect with? Um, and obviously linked to that is, you know, the relevant websites you've got. Is your website fit for purpose? Is it up to date? Because once you start your connection campaign, hopefully they're going to connect. But they, before they connect, they're possibly going to have a look at you and check that you are somebody they want to connect with. So get ready for your connections. Okay, target, uh, uh, secret number four is um, target your clients. And uh, you know we do that in lots of ways, but uh, in this model, uh, Sales Navigator is, uh, is clearly really important. And again, I'm sure most people listening to this call will be using Sales Navigator for that reason. But Sales Navigator is an integral part in how we uh, work with Duck Soup. Uh, we have lots of different saved searches for different profiles. I think we have about 9,000 connections, which for some, it's not a lot. For some, it, you know, it might be. But so we have 9,000 connections, but we have different saved searches. Um, but really, from our point of view, we use... Uh, Ducks, duck suit, or we use Sales Navigator in this case. Uh, and what you're seeing here on the screen, hopefully you can see that, is this is our, our new connections uh, targeting. Um, in this case, we're targeting people in the States and Canada. Um, we're looking at people who work in organizations above 5,000 people because we're looking for large organizations we work with. That seems to fit the, the services and the products that we offer. And we're looking to target people of a certain job title and, uh, and in certain functions. But again, obviously, a lot of people out there will be using it. If you're not, then you know this is a great tool to use to uh, target the people you want to connect with. And once you've done that, um, the other thing that I find really valuable, and my secret number five, is the auto-enroll feature that uh, Duck Soup introduced. I also use HubSpot, HubSpot uh, and, and it's an email platform, and they do have an auto enroll feature, but it costs a fortune. Um, which I probably shouldn't say that with the DuckSoup team listening, but the, the auto enroll feature for uh, DuckSoup is really good. And so, you know, that allows you to, you know, load up whatever it is in this example of, you know, up to 4,000 people. Um, most of our campaigns tend to be for around about three, thousand sometimes four thousand people um, but again it's a great way and it just quickly zips them all up into that campaign that then starts to run so secret number five use the auto enroll feature if you're not already doing so okay let's get into probably um some of the the, the more detail and uh i'll slow down a little bit here um but secret number six is is get your campaigns going uh, if you haven't done so already. Now, what we do um, in um, Duck Soup is we run two main campaigns. Don't worry, I'm going to blow this screen up for you. Uh, but we have our new con connections campaign. And I will send this so those people who want to steal, if they think this is relevant, they'll steal these messages. But for our new con connections campaign, we will run, let's go back there so we'll run a, a message saying if you can read that i'll read it out but yeah hey thought it'd be good connect as i see we both have a focus on innovation i'd also be happy to share some top tips on how we help leading brands 
identify deeper insights, compelling claims, and willing product concepts. I'm being upfront. They may not realize this in a few months' time, but I'm telling them, connect with me, and I'm going to send you stuff. And uh, so I want to be open. And in fact, before, I, we never used to do that. Initially, I'd say, hey, we're interested in innovation. Let's connect. And I got a much higher connection rate. But actually, but I then started sending people things and there was, you know, some people got you know, a bit hacked off that we were starting sending stuff. So I'm being much more upfront, but obviously your own, however you're connecting, you will design a message accordingly. And I'm sure there are better connection messages out there. This message seems to work for us. We get around about 15, sometimes 20% connections um, when we're reaching out, which I think is reasonable but there are probably obviously it depends on the target audience and who you are you know the more targeted you are the more relevant you are your connection rates might be higher but anyway once we've connected we then through duck smoot soup they get their automated follow-up messages so a day later delighted we've connected as a quick follow-up click on the link link below to find to read five ways to generate winning concepts for your business including the importance of new claims shout if you'd like to know more best wishes michael and i'll show you how that message looks for them in linkedin uh, there's a, a url link there to uh, a blog page and then um if they haven't responded to that six days later they get another message saying hope my last blog post was helpful if you're looking for insights and trends to inspire creative thinking check out four simple techniques to consider hope this sparks some creative interest Best wishes, Michael. And then finally, um, whatever that is, eight days later, so 14 days after we've connected, they get a final message saying, hi, if you have responsibility for product innovation, click below to read on seven top tips on how to write better claims. Drop me a message if you'd like to know more. And over time, we've played around with those messages. Um, this seems to work um, in terms of we do get some response back but I'll come back to that in a moment. Anyway, our first campaign and a campaign we, we have running most of the year is the new connections campaign. And we send that out at about 40 a day. LinkedIn, we used to send out more than that, but LinkedIn put some limits on. And so I think 40, 40 to 50 a day is about what we do. The other campaign that we run, and I'm sure, by the way, there'll be others listening who may be using this feature already, will run more campaigns. But the other one we tend to use is our first degree connection campaign. And with that, because there's no limit or there is a less of a limit on the messages going out, we send out around 250 messages a day. So these are people we've connected with. So we've got nine and a half thousand connections. Uh, we are probably only send out messaging to around about three and a half thousand who really fit our target profile. Um, and here's an example of what we just, this is our new year campaign. Where are we? April. We're about to start a, a spring campaign, but this is, this went out in the middle of January. And actually for this, this, this year, we've had really good response on this campaign relatively. Um, and there we've got three messages. So the first one was Happy New Year, hope all is well. Um, and obviously it's personalized, uh, the high FM. Um, if innovation is a priority for you in 2023, take a look at the latest blog report on five ways to generate winning concepts. And 14 days later, you know, if you're focused on innovation for 2023, uh, you might be interested to read the following. And then finally, if you're looking to brainstorm new ideas with your team, read a blog report below on a reminder of how to run more effective innovation workshops. Um, so that message went out. We were sending out 250 a day. So someone do the maths for me, you know, got three and a half thousand, you know, that runs over a period of, well, in the end, it ran, ran over a period of about three, two and a half months because we had some, the, the few days we, we turned the, the campaigning off. But, uh, you know, you're running that uh, over, you know, a couple of months, really in terms of uh, that campaign. I'll come back to that because I think I'll come back to these campaigns and I'll, which I'll come back to the, there are two secrets really, which really captured the overall theme of what I'm hopefully trying to communicate, which is all about sort of nurturing and playing the long game. Uh, so we're getting there. Um, 
But secret number six, get your campaigns going. Um, blogs to drive engagement. Um, I guess use whatever you can to drive engagement, but I think giving away free content is helpful. Uh, you know, I think you probably have to do that rather than sending a campaign out saying, you know, use my services, here's my services, use my services. And I remember we had a very good presenter some time ago. I listened to. It was Australian, and he was quite he was quite direct with us. Uh, I think Giles or Joe will remind me of his name, but he was kind of really saying, you know, people on LinkedIn tend to dive in too quickly with the products they're trying to sell. And was, so, sorry, Michael. Yeah, that was Tyron. Yeah. Tyron. And you know, those people who've listened to his presentation, he might be on the call today. I thought he was great. And there are other people who are who've got lots of great advice on on how to sell and how to engage. And you know, I again, I'm not professing to be the world's expert. I'm just sharing some of the things with you today that work uh, and, and obviously touch on some things that maybe don't work. But anyway, blogs to drive engagement have worked for us. Uh, I'm not again professing to be the best blog post writer, but we have a we 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 create the blogs, but actually we used to use articles on LinkedIn, which was fine. Um, and that you know the way you can write articles on LinkedIn is is really nice. Uh, but we now send them directly to our website, where we've got different blog posts. And that, if you can see the the screen there, uh, I don't know, that's how the the messages arrive. So uh, they look you know reasonably nice when they receive in sales navigator sadly they don't look as nice it's just a url but when they when people get messages in linkedin which i guess is most people will get them in linkedin you know relatively few of our clients will probably have sales navigator um but that's how the the blog posts appear and uh, with a you know a nice image that they can then click on and go through to our website where we have uh, the different blog posts and the uh, the different you know the information we provide and we do a blog about once a month maybe sometimes twice a month uh, you know obviously there are people who do more blogs than that but that seems to be enough for us you know and we're obviously giving variations on a theme uh, you know we're giving different ways in which you know getting across our exp expertise on how we work as a team in different dimensions of the products that we offer, the services that we offer, which it kind of goes back to secret number one, is refine your offer. Is your offer, you know, is it right? Is it fit? Is it relevant? But anyway, blogs to drive engagement, and they certainly have seemed to work for us, you know, certainly better than the LinkedIn articles that we used to use. Um, staying on secret number seven, staying on blogs, um, here's, um, a quick blog, blog, a quick plug um, for a little tool that we use called Rebrandly. Uh, uh, by the way, no commission here, uh, but I just think it's a nice little tool. Um, uh, I I have a, a coach. Well, I think it's coach is probably a grand title actually, but he's somebody who works with me who gives me lots of advice on how to sell. He's a really, uh, he's one of our team, but he. Uh, He's always coming up with, why not try this or try Calendarly, those people who use Calendarly. But this tool is called Rebrandly, and it's just a nice way of changing a URL. So you see on the left-hand side, that's the actual URL for our blog posts, and you can change it to whatever you want. In this case, we've called it Ideas Report, five ways to generate winning ideas. Uh, but what's nice about Rebrandly, and this is the free version, uh, is it also allows you to track click-throughs um, if you can see that uh, there, we obviously use Google Analytics as well, but it's just a nice feature to show which blogs seem to be resonating most with people. Anyway, that's Rebrandly and that's blogs and that's Secret 7. Right, um, now I guess this is the meat of the discussion. Uh, and uh, this is really about sort of nurturing. And uh, by the way, I'm not doing another plug here for audible.com. Um, but this is the best image I could come up with, I'm afraid. Um, and it, the image, this, 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 this secret, I've got two things I'm going to communicate with you here. Um, go early, but play the long game. Uh, be prepared to go early, but play the long game. So um, secret number eight then is go early with success. And you'll see here, there's a the screen is moving now. But uh, you know, occasionally, 
uh, maybe once a week, once every two weeks, we get we send out a LinkedIn connection and someone comes back, as in this case, from her name is Clytie Lim. She works for a, uh, a large food manufacturing company based in Singapore. They're a global company. And she got that con LinkedIn connection and replied straight away. And, you know, there we are. You're seeing some conversation between myself and Clytie. Um, saying hi let's have a meeting and we have indeed had a meeting uh we've had two meetings now and we've already sent a proposal for a potential global project for one of their core food businesses and uh you know if it comes off great but uh the, the message really here is whilst i'm going to mainly focus on nurturing occasionally just occasionally you know the the, the LinkedIn campaigns do generate a, a fast response and you've just be lucky, you've just managed to send a message out at the right time and it's hit them at the right place and you've sent them the right messaging. Uh, but so obviously be prepared to go early with success, respond quickly. And so I have some templates behind the scene that I can sort of cut, cut and paste and, uh, and reply quickly, uh, but in a, a customized way. So go early with success. Um, this other message, this is a, a good one, but this, by the way, we've got time. So look at the date, 2020, and uh, the, this message went out to somebody at uh, PepsiCo in Singapore, also in Singapore. And if you scroll down, um, we've got time, but here we go. I keep sending this person messages, probably not every week. I mean, I, we're sending maybe, as I said, we do maybe three campaigns a year. So they, this person might get, gosh, three, six, nine messages in a year. Uh, not always, so the campaigns aren't always three messages long, but you'll see here, all these messages go out and uh, June, 9, June 16 or whenever that was, that was last year. Um, but if you keep scrolling down, we've got time, have a coffee, twiddle your thumbs. And we eventually arrive to January the 10th. I'll quickly go back up to there. There we go, January the 10th. And finally, after 16 messages from sending a message on January the 10th, wishing Pirate Happy New Year, hope all is well, and here's five ways to generate new concepts, she comes back saying, great, thanks for sharing the blog. This is really helpful. Would it be great to connect and we can partner together on some innovation development work? She gave me her email address, which is great. And, and sure enough, we've connected and we've had a couple of very good meetings. Um, we sent the proposal for a project in Asia, but also quite usefully, we've got some good referrals back to uh, some people in, in PepsiCo in Europe. So that is absolutely, if nothing else, if you can remember nothing else from my little 30 minutes I'm with you, you know, play the long game. This is about nurturing and, you know, and there are some people, sometimes they come back and say, stop bothering me, stop sending me these messages. And I go back very politely saying, really sorry, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm sorry it's not relevant and I remove them. Uh, but, uh, you know, you get cases like this where someone after 60 messages has come back to you. I'll give you one other example, similar case. Um, so I won't bore you with all the messages, but uh, this was, again, 16 messages went to this uh, lady called Astrid. Astrid works in R&D for uh, Johnson & Johnson, for, and somebody, uh, see, messages went out 16 times, and look at the date, January 18, on that same date, and it is no coincidence, on the same date, we got a message saying, an inquiry saying, hey, we want to run a project. It actually came from her, her, her colleague, and Astrid had referred her colleague to us, um, so, you know, this occasionally happens and it's led to two projects. Very nice. And, uh, you know, that doesn't always happen, but it's, uh, it, it's about playing the long game. But when it happens, you know, all the, all the, the time and the investment, it really, it pays, pays for itself. Uh, so play the long game, be prepared to play the long game, uh, in terms of nurturing your clients, because, you know, they obviously, they only need the services that we provide by and large, you know, once every probably three years, they will, they'll run a, 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 an innovation pipeline project for their businesses. And they're not doing it all the time. I guess it's like buying a motor car. You don't buy a motor car every year, but the, the car companies have got to keep nurturing their potential clients with, with, with information, with news. So secret number nine is 
play the long game uh, to win work, whatever work, whatever businesses you're running. Three more secrets uh, to go and then hopefully there'll be a few questions and then we can wrap up. Um, secret number 10 is keep your campaigns running. You know, as I said at the beginning, where do we want to spend our time? And I think most small businesses probably want to spend as little time on selling and as much time on, on delivering as possible. Um, and uh, I'm sure that's true for, for most businesses. And But so while you're running uh, projects, You've got to keep the balls in the air. You've got to keep juggling. You've got to keep those campaigns running. Um, and that, I think, is where Duck Soup really, really helps. Because while we are working and while we're doing other things, or maybe even while we're sailing, um, there's a little computer in the office whirring away. Um, whirring away, and there it is at the back there. And it's set up using Duck Soup Turbo. Um, to run, and we kind of used to run it 24/7. We kind of varied it, and we sometimes we'll play around with it. I, I, you know, I've been told that really running it seven days a week isn't an issue, and I don't think it is necessarily. But you know, you set it up, and certainly for our first degree campaigns, we are sending 250 messages a day. And I think the first thing I do when I get in the office is just check that little machine is working, and it hasn't sort of shut down for a software update. But we have a second little machine running, firing out those messages all the time. Uh, so that is my secret number 10. Keep your campaigns running. Use the Duck Soup Turbo feature to enable that. Right, last two coming up. Uh, and this is, again, I'm not on commission here, but I thought I would share this. I mean, I thought it's nothing to do with Duck Soup. Uh, and you will all, I'm sure, have your own ways of of keeping your to-do lists. But I have a tool called Things, which is, uh, I think it's a Mac tool, but uh, it's if you use it, great. You may use something else, but Things for me is invaluable. And I don't know whether you can see the writing here, but you know, it's build the offer, sell the offer, and deliver the offer. And obviously these are projects we're working on, but here is, is where we kind of capture or how I can track, you know, leads and interests. So, and there's something called hotter work leads. So that, that list of people there, I would say pretty much all of them uh, are from LinkedIn connections. And there's another one called warmer work leads or there's LinkedIn only leads. Um, but you know, when someone comes back and says, hey, thanks for the article, thanks for the blog, but I'm on maternity leave, you know, get back to me in, uh, in six months time. Well, I'll stick it in things and hopefully in six months time, I will we'll drop that person a message using LinkedIn. So not an automated message, but a, uh, a bespoke message. So anyway, that's my plug for things. And no, I'm not on commission with things, but it's just, I think it's an important part of how we use Duck Soup, how we use LinkedIn. It all kind of fits in together. And finally, secret number 12, track and refine, track and refine. And again, I think, uh, uh, um, well, I think LinkedIn, uh, sorry, Duck Soup have provides, you know, the really good way of, of tracking different campaigns and, and you, you can compare one campaign against the other. Do we have longer messages, shorter messages? What is it like with blog posts as opposed to using LinkedIn articles? Do we do the campaign, you know, on the 1st of January or do we do it maybe two weeks afterwards when people come back from holidays? By the way, the latter was the thing that worked. Um, do we send message? Do we send a Christmas message out and start a campaign in that way? We didn't this year, and I think loads of people get messages. But anyway, the point is, use different tools to track and refine. You know, obviously use Google Analytics, what other what other tools you might have. But Duck Soup's uh, tool, I think, is very useful. Uh, you know, it's certainly allowed us to uh, play around with the different campaigns, and, and you know. Uh, just whether it's three messages, four messages, shorter messages, as I said, um, but um, you know it certainly has helped. And so there, and you know that's the what I showed you earlier, the the messages for our first degree campaign. Yeah, certainly. By the way, the shorter the message, the better. We all know that, but it's it's easier said than done sometimes. Um, but also, you know, the, as I said, the different blog posts that we added to them was able to track which ones are more effective. Um, and finally, really, it, that really brings us back to the beginning again. 
it's be ready to refine your offer because you might be doing so much. You're trying some Google advertising. You're doing the duck soup stuff. You're doing, you know, doing a, you're trying, trying lots of clever stuff with your SEO. Nothing's working. Well, probably you need to go back to the basics and, and, and refine your offer again. And by the way, we've done that many times. I've been running my business for 23 years. And, you know, this loop is basically, I think that's what you have to do in business. And uh, you are constantly learning and if you're not learning i don't think you're going to be in business very long because it's fundamental to and i think anything you do you have to try different things and, and learn um you know hopefully you're going to get it right and let's you know you get something right and let run with that for a couple of years and great um but i was I, as i mentioned i started life at procter and gamble my business life and um you know there was a very much a strong mantra there that we had to every year when we put put forward our budgets we had to have a budget of investing in what are you going to learn this year and it might be this year we're going to learn about how effective door-to-door -door sampling campaigns are or we're going to learn how effective radio campaigns are but the same applies whatever you're doing whether you're running a hair salon whether you're running an accountancy firm you know, what are you doing to learn? Obviously, I've been talking today about how we can improve how we sell. And I, I'm not professing to say we have it 100% right, but you know, you've seen some of the things we do. Uh, but obviously, if all the things you're doing are selling are not right, then you might think, hang on a second, I need to think about what we're offering our clients, or maybe we need to be talking to different types of clients. So anyway, that's really my final um, kind of secret, which comes back to the beginning. And in summary, here they are. So maybe if the people got any questions, I don't know. Um, but my secrets are, number one, be ready to refine your offer or have you got the right offer? Um, you know, create your funnel, uh, get ready for connections, make sure your profiles are looking good, your website's looking good. Um, use different targeting tools or certainly sales navigator to target the people you want to reach out to. Use the auto roll uh, tool that uh, I think is a fantastic feature of, of Duck Soup, and certainly it makes life so much easier for us, certainly compared to HubSpot. Um, get your campaigns going. Uh, use free content to drive engagement, whatever that is. Uh, go with the early successes, they sometimes happen. Uh, but be prepared to play the long game, which probably is the overall message of this. Uh, of this talk keep the campaigns running in the background get another machine running uh, whatever you do but a plug for things and then finally track and refine your offer anyway i think that's it joe uh, and giles uh, i'm looking to you on the screen here but are there any questions otherwise um, yeah. before we get to the questions if i can just add you know I, i've i've known michael for a couple of years now we've had a number of calls and i think uh you, you've been sort of on a, on a, on a sort of like a, a learning curve, your learning curve at the start when we started, you know, with Duck Soup, you were like a little bit overwhelmed with it. And it was like, well, what can I do? How can I work out how to get the best out of it? And, and you know, <laughs> you've really impressed me with how you've you've been very, uh, you've stuck with, stuck with the solution and you, you've learnt to manage it in such a way that it's become um, a, a really solid process in your business. Um, you know, you found a way that it works for you, and I, I really like how you 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 play the long game. You're 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 in it. You know, I think when we first talked, I think you had maybe seven thousand connections. Now you've got nine thousand first degree connections or so. So your your network has grown a lot, um, and you've really embraced that action of of nurturing that that that. Uh, that that network and making sure that you're continually massaging them, continually continually engaging with them in a, in a positive and engaging way. And as you say, when you play the long game, you get those 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 really satisfying wins um, that 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 come out of the blue sometimes. And 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 that's when you think, yeah, this is this is the right way to go. Cue me, hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, we've got lots of chat going on here, so I'm replying to most of you as I can do. Um, so we've got about 10 questions. I can see there's more coming in. Let's see what we can get ticked off, Michael. Um, so Laura was asking about what's the usual time frame for auto enrolling. Uh, she said, I found the campaigns extended over time because of the LinkedIn limit. 
um, i.e. for 400 contacts, several weeks if the campaign has several messages to be delivered. So what kind of time frame are you typically seeing, Michael, with auto-enrolling? Well, also rolling is obviously do that in, in minutes. That's what I think is great about it. Well, because before that came in, you had to kind of manually enroll people. So I don't think that's probably, and I suspect that's not the purpose of the question. I think it's about the time frame of the campaign itself. Is that right, Joe? Um, I, would, I would imagine so, yes. I think my interpretation there is that, you know, you're looking at maybe 400 people to enroll. And if every single one of them is a connection request initially, then of course it depends how quickly people accept your connection requests as to what then happens subsequently. Um, so so the, the bottleneck is usually the number of connection requests you send out per day, whether that's 25, 30, 40, whatever it may be. And then the next bottleneck is how quickly people respond. And that's the one thing that you would have no control over. You know, when are people going to accept your connection request? Who knows? Yeah, but even on the first screen campaign, so obviously you are limited by uh, where you are and I think your 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 LinkedIn um, uh, limits are set by I think the number of c connections that you have so obviously the more connections you have I think LinkedIn you, you can get away with sending out more messages a day so that that is a, a restraining factor so I think for I mentioned I would do maybe 250 messages a day that's probably on the high side it may be 200 to 250 so let that you know that's let's say it's a thousand a week so if we send out, you know, three weeks to get that first message out and then, you know, it's another three weeks and another three weeks. So, you know, when we're looking at nine weeks to run a three message campaign and we try and break, have a, a, bit, a bit of a week in between that. So that would be our campaign. So, yeah, nine, it's probably 12 weeks. It's three months. You know, that's so that's and we do that maybe three times a year. But it is obviously determined by the numbers you want to have in the campaign and, and your daily limits. Yeah, that, that's to point out there, there is a difference between the number of invites you send and the number of direct messages that you send out with with with, uh, with Duck Soup. Yeah, and, and that's all explained under the throttling section. So if you need uh, answers on that, then uh, reach out to our support team and they can send you the appropriate uh, documentation. The next one we have is from Sheridan. Do you send messages from a company account or do individual sales reps send them from their own accounts? That's a good question. Uh, individual. And I think why, I mean, I, I, but my instinct says you should be individual, but maybe not. But I, I think it's, it's all about, you know, really for me, it's personal connections. That's what we're doing. You know, we're a small business, you know, as the, the business owner, it is coming from me. But again, that will vary based on the size of your business. But I, I Think. You can only do on behalf of an individual. You can only uh, perform actions on LinkedIn on behalf of an individual. Okay. Well, that um, answers the question. You yeah. Never log in with a company account. So you 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 know you become an administrator for a company, but you can only perform connection requests, etc., on as an on an individual basis. That's just the, the premise of LinkedIn. I mean, um, I, they are trying to be. They are trying to be. You know, it is about trying to have a personal connection and making them as personal as possible. I mean, you know, appreciate that it is automated, but you know, trying to make those messages as friendly and and then obviously the follow-ups then can obviously be clearly be uh, very personalised. And in addition to that, then Ash has said, when you say we lead Duck Suit running in the background, is that connected to a company account or a personal account? I guess a personal. So we being our team, and I'm, you know, I'm responsible by and large for lead generation as the, as the, as the you know, the main, one of the main partners. Uh, but so it, it is a, a personal account it's running from. Um, okay. So Stephen has asked on the get your campaigns going section that you discussed, how are you finding the responses when you have longer messages that include your signature and URLs versus something that's shorter or more personal to start with? Well, I think overall, obviously, the shorter the message, the better response. I get that. Uh, uh, and so that is true. But then if it's that short, then, you know, what are you actually giving them? So there is a bit of a balance here. You know, you could send really short messages. Hi, how are you doing today? OK, great. You know, so it is an element of what are you giving them? And uh, uh, but I think the our most recent campaign, we got it fairly short. So I think the, the deck you'll get from Joe, you know, whether you find it interesting or not, but certainly that was a length we seem to get right. Should you add your signature block? Maybe that's a bit, you know, a bit too much. I, I get it. Um, but I, you know, anyway, and there's probably, well, there'll be a personal preference there. Um, 
I guess to some extent, it, it, I guess to some extent, it will depend on the demographic as well, the kind of people that you're trying to, you know, the, the business that you're in and the people that you're trying to, to kind of get in contact with. So as you said, personal preference comes into that too. Um, Francesco has asked, are you able to identify who is taking action from your LinkedIn messages and engaging with the blog posts? Perhaps your blog posts are built as landing pages through HubSpot with HubSpot analytics to trigger a different duck soup campaign or triggering um, I, of work. I, the answer for me is I'm sure there's probably is a way, um, but we don't, uh, we don't track. I mean, I think when we use hubs, uh, HubSpot, then you can track individual click-throughs and who's clicked on it. I'm not sure whether that's the same for Duck Soup. Um, it isn't for Rebrandly. Uh, I think maybe you pay the premium version of Rebrandly, you get that. Uh, but no, I haven't. We haven't gone into that level of detail. That's probably something that you could look at. Fundamentally, we will connect with people who respond to us. Uh, rather than say, oh, well, they clicked on this page, should we follow up? I'm not saying that's not a good thing to do, but, uh, you know, we are going where, going with the energy, I suppose. So if somebody responds to us, we'll go with the energy. So I'm not sure I answered your question. Maybe, Giles, is there a feature that you can track through uh, Duck Soup? On no. No, we don't know. No, there's, there's currently no way of, uh, of tracking that through Duck Soup. No, you'd need to use some sort of an external tracking, uh, yeah uh way of doing that yeah um i've just spotted uh, a response from someone saying giles has infinite patience answering the same questions over and over again <laughs> um what else do we have um can you share any tips this is from romit can you share any tips on how we can better approach our interaction with clients from the usa oh well, about half our connections are with clients in the USA, and I've got to be careful here because there are maybe people from the USA on the call. Uh, no, I think um, I would say, well, about 90% of our business is outside. I'm based in the UK, is outside of the UK. And I would say majority of that is based with clients either in the US for projects from the US or their projects, their global projects by and large. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess over the years I've worked with American companies, so I'm using a, a, a there is, I think there probably is a language, uh, a style that you use, but I I don't necessarily see a difference in when I'm writing. The, I'm working for, by and large for global companies and they, you know, there is a corporate way of writing and they do like things to be short and sweet, particularly with one company I used to work for, Record Bank Keys, and my boy, you had to be super, super, super short with all your email communication. So I don't think I answered your question, but there, there, you know, there probably is a there's a star you want to write, and you know, and uh, certainly if you're writing to Americans, use American language, don't use English language. As simple as that, you know. How do you spell favorites? Spell it the American way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I speak. Sorry, just to just to interject there. Yeah, I speak to people all over the world, and yeah, you know, every, every culture has a sort of different norm. You know, whether you're speaking to people in Germany, whether you're speaking to people in Italy or the US, and and yeah, hopefully you know your the culture in which you're operating better than everyone else. And also, every industry has its own idiosyncrasies as well. So just try and be aware and sympathetic of those. Yeah, and by the way, I do think. I mean, I know. Well, you know, uh, you know, in terms of correctness political correctness and i think there is a, a language you should use you know we are you know and, and particularly uh you know so when you know if i'm writing to somebody in europe i might then say you know, happy christmas happy easter whatever but you know we are clearly in a, a global world where people are all sorts of religions so i think that is and i do think in america they are more sensitive to that and i think for good reason because they have a, a probably a much more you know multi cultural or sort of multi-religious world. So there are, I think there are some things to think about, but there's probably uh, lots of courses you can look at on, on different writing styles, but I, I think you should be respectful, whoever you're speaking to. Um, another one, uh, this is from Malcolm. Oh, this is quite a good one. Uh, in the back and forth messaging, so as, as you're messaging backwards and forwards on LinkedIn, when someone responds, what wording should you use to ask and move it into a, an offline phone call 
Yeah, that's a, it is a very good question. I mean, I, I didn't show you the follow-up calls. I don't, I kind of vary it. When they respond, I won't be saying, hey, let's have a meeting, let's have a meeting. You know, there is an element of, again, I'm thinking back to Tyrone or whoever talked us years through, you know, don't jump in and say, great, let's meet, because you might put them off. And it really also, if they're just giving you a, a thanks, that's interesting, that doesn't mean to say they want to meet you. Um, so I think you've just got to, you know, you'll 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 get it right yourself in terms of learning so it varies um there are some people if they show lots of interest i say oh great i'm really pleased you're interested in the article if you'd like to know more you know i'd love to have a short you know let's have a quick zoom call and i will actually give them a, in my you know, i will give them a link to calendarly those people who know calendarly um, i think linkedin have a similar service that you can they can book a time in your calendar so there are some people I will do that to. Other people I'll just say, hey, you know, I'm pleased you found it interesting. If there are any questions, let me know. So it will vary depending on, and also depending on the person. If it's the, you know, the global marketing director or the global innovation director of, um, you know, someone at Unilever or somebody, I'll probably, I actually won't jump to it, but I will certainly, you know, follow up a little bit more and say, let's let's meet up. So, sorry, that's a long answer to your question. I think it varies. Um, but ultimately, the point is, yeah, I do want to get them out of LinkedIn and I do want to get them onto an email conversation. And I, you know, either via HubSpot or directly from my Outlook account. And then, and ultimately, I want to meet them. Uh, and that's so that's where, you know, we're aiming is to have that Zoom call. And invariably, it is that. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I'm multitasking. Um, let's see, let's see. Another question. What kind of success rates, this is from Stephen, um, what kind of success rates are you seeing when you're sending 10 plus messages in the long game? We're getting Yeah, started. well, oh gosh, I mean, it's probably, I mean, I think that the numbers come to mind. Well, firstly, on the connection rates, anything with between 15 and 20 percent of people connect. So that's kind of in my head. If I'm looking at a, 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 connection, a connection campaign and it's less than that, I'll I'll just go and check why was that. And you know, if you look at over over a three month period, it actually probably nets out about that. In terms of the uh, the follow ups, the, the connections, so you know, the response rate is around about two percent, uh, one and a half to two percent, which sounds so small. Hence, it's a numbers game. You've got to reach out to lots of people. Is that 2% on the third message, fourth message, sixth message? I don't know. So that you probably, you know, the stats on the individual messages get smaller and smaller. But, you know, overall, um, we're certainly getting a 2% engagement. And that's somebody coming back saying, you know, thanks, that was interesting. Or, uh, you know, thanks for sharing it. it, rather than just a thanks or a thumbs up. Um, I don't know whether that answers your question. But the, the bottom line, the numbers are, are small but that's the nature of it. Could you do better? I'm sure people listening on the call could do better than that. And it obviously depends on, you know, if I'm selling, depending on what you're selling, you know, if I'm selling uh, something which is amazing and people absolutely have to have tomorrow, then maybe your, your response rates are going to go up. You know, if I'm selling solar panels or, you know, half the price, then maybe you're going to get a much better connection rate than me selling innovation projects for the latest, uh, you know, smartphone. Uh, so it depends. Thank you for that one. Right, let's have a look down here. So I haven't vetted any of these, so uh, just bear with, bear with. Um, could you please talk a little bit about your targeting strategy? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's, you know, excessively scientific because, you know, I suppose when you're, you know, running running a business, any business, you know, you, you kind of think, what am I going to, what am I going to sell? And particularly if you're running your own business, and you think about your strengths, uh, you think about the competition, and you think about who your customers might be. Um, but in terms of over the 23 years, you kind of start learning what your strengths are and what they're not, and and where the best fit is. So the best fit for us and what we do is with large consumer focused organization so that already you know large what does that mean it's organization so when you come onto sales navigator it's all organization typically with more than 5000 people um, and then we're looking for you know the types of people who would be interested in our services so uh, you know we're talking to r&d directors marketing directors innovation directors so i think it's um, 
you know, the science of our targeting strategy has evolved and it's with it's very clear in our mind who we are trying to target. Uh, we are not going after a small SME. Uh, we are looking at large organizations for, for whatever reasons. So I hope that helps. I'm sure there's more, you know, sophisticated, you know, when you are, if you're launching a, you know, a new type of running shoe, whatever it might be, you've obviously done your um, analysis of who the likely target market is for your, your running shoe. So you're trying to use and, uh, you know, whether you're using LinkedIn to do that. So that's how we, it's it evolved, I think is, is, is the answer to your, to your question. Um, another one we've got here, which might be for Giles actually, when sending the 250 messages per day to your first degree connections, is there a way to only send messages to connections made after a specified date? Um, I was literally just typing an answer to that one. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, um, what would the, the, the easiest way to that to do be? Um, the only place that you can see your connections in a chronological order is in your, under my connections, under regular LinkedIn. It's the only place to go. What you can do is, and yeah, I'll probably talk about some things here that I'll need to put some links into uh, into the answer. Basically, go to my connections on LinkedIn, um, uh, and I'll try and, yeah, you go, you go to my network and my, my, uh, my connections. Um, and then, yeah, basically use DuckSoup to scan that list. And then you can go back to whatever date you want, you know, basically scan that list. It's an infinite scrolling list. You could scan that list and then take it from there and then start enrolling people from that point using the custom uh, list. So I'll put a couple of URLs into the answers now so that um, Alex, who asked the question, uh, can, uh, can find uh, what I'm talking about there. And uh, hopefully that will make sense. Alex, great question because I think I think actually, Giles, I I think we have talked about that, and, and you you did indeed show me. Have I done it? Probably not. And if there was a simpler way of doing it as well, great. You know, if you could kind of put a, a range in, I don't know whether that's possible. A day no, range. Or unfortunately, there isn't. No, um, and it's yeah, it's just one of those idiosyncrasies of LinkedIn. You know, it's yep. the only place that you can see your your connections listed chronologically is there actually the other thing you can do and and this is this is something that a lot of people forget about is you can go to linkedin and ask for a data download so you can go to linkedin you go to your account you go to you ask for a data download and then you can get a list of all of your connections in a in a in, in a spreadsheet format and you have the connection dates in there so you can do that as a you know you can do that periodically you can decide what data that linkedin send you and then you've got that data uh, to hand. So you could do that as well, because that, that contains, I think, the URL of the people that you've connected with um, mm -hmm. and the, the actual connection date. So you can then sort it by date. That's the other alternative. Um, I think I'm probably going to call it there. We do have some other questions. I think Giles and I will probably try and trawl through a few of them and just um, put the responses in that we can. I'm sorry if we haven't got to your question, um, but Michael, we had some great ones there um, and we've still got about 10 probably that we could go through, but I'm aware that it's now two minutes to, to five in the UK. Um, so I think we should probably look at, look at wrapping up. So from my perspective, Michael, can I just ask you to jump onto the next? I think yep. there might be, I, don't, I can't remember to be honest what slides we've got next. <laughs> I'm still trying to get those uh, URLs to Alex. Let me just get those in there. There we are. I've sent those to Alex. There we go. <laughs> right, thank you. Hope that helps, Alex. Um, so the next webinar in a couple of weeks' time is um, basically it's a, an Ask Giles section. We should basically just call it Ask Giles Anything. Um, so uh, pretty <laughs> much, <laughs> yeah, it'll be one of the marketing team again, either myself or, or Beth potentially sitting on the end, um, and either you know, relaying all, all the various questions that come about Duck Soup and about LinkedIn uh, across to Giles. Again, we'll answer those that we can do um, and those that we can't, we'll put forward to Giles. Um, so I think that would be a really good good way of using the time. You know, we have so many questions from all of you on these sessions and we never ever get to answer all of them. You know, we yeah. normally do a small handful at the end. So I think uh, a focused session just on your questions. I, I, th think. I think what I'll probably do, um, Joe, is we'll, we'll probably just do a little touch on the the, the, the new campaign features, um, which I know I need to talk Michael through at some point in the, in the near future <laughs> as well. 
Um, so I'll do a little little snippet on on just the new campaign features, all of the new things that you can do there with campaigns and and, and so uh, and that sort of stuff. And then the main focus will be yeah, right, get your questions in. So the sooner people get their questions in, the more prepared we can be. Brilliant. So for those that want to submit their questions, um, then you can do those to um, info at ducks hyphen soup hyphen hyphen soup dot com ducks hyphen soup dot com. Um, and send your questions through. Obviously, we'll be um, collating them during the session as well, like we have done today. Um, so yeah, just just join us, and you can ask Giles whatever you like, as long as it's to do with LinkedIn automation and <laughs> Um So yeah, uh, review notes. There, we we love to hear your reviews about our webinars, about our products, about the tools, um, and we love to get your feedback. So um, for those that uh, want to share then head over to g2.com um, and the ones that we like the most we'll send a cap to we'll be in touch and get a cap we've got a yellow one there michael's got a yellow one uh, myself and giles have got a blue one um, and what else do i want to tell you um, we'll send a recording across to you by email um, normally in about four or five hours time and it will also be on the website um, probably from tomorrow at some point um, for you to have a look at and find on the website and I think, I think that's all my rambling done. <laughs> I, so, I, I just think we should just say thank you, especially to Michael uh, for his, uh, his uh, the energy, the information and his insights that he shared with everybody. I think it's been uh, really good to have a, a new guest speaker and, and sort of get, get fingers behind what he's doing and, and share that information. It's been really good. Yeah, so if anyone would like the slides, then again, contact info and we will get them sent across to you. Uh, and that's 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 it from us good thank you everybody and good luck <laughs> thanks michael thanks michael bye everyone bye